I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to do an experiment. Today we are going to attempt to glaze non-superwash yarn. Now this is possible but I don't think I've ever tried to do it and certainly I've never achieved this on purpose. So we'll see if we can do it today. Now what is glazing? Glazing is a dye process where instead of having the dye sort of soak all the way into the yarn, so you look at the yarn and you see a solid color in a segment, it, it sort of, you want the dye to strike so quickly to the yarn that you end up with feeling like the dye only is on the surface level. Like you have something almost airbrushed. And I'll put some examples of some glazed yarn I've dyed up on the screen. So you can feel sometimes this deep, dark layer, but still see the colors that are underneath. And this does have a slightly different feel to it than if you just layer colors, because you feel like you're seeing multiple colors at once. And I love the effect. But this technique, it relies on the acid dye striking to the yarn really quickly. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know that dyes strike to superwash yarn much faster than non-superwash. And so we are much more likely to get this result on superwash yarn. However, I played around this summer uh, dyeing a lot of different yarn bases, and granted they were all superwash, but the techniques that I've been playing with worked super well to glaze yarn. And so I figure let's give it our best shot and see if we can glaze two different non-superwash yarn bases. The yarns we're gonna play with today are Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. This yarn is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And we're also gonna play with the super bulky single ply yarn, a la Prima, which is 100% merino wool. I figured even though this is not particularly high twist, given that the ply of the Alla Prima is so thick, if we're gonna get some glazing on non-superwash, this is a good candidate. It's a great candidate. So we'll give this a shot. Now I went ahead and pre-soaked our yarn overnight in just some plain tap water, but I do think we're gonna wanna add some acid to this before we set up our glaze bath, just because I think that that will work well. I put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask and weighed out 0.5 grams of the Royal Purple Acid Dye and dissolved it in hot tap water to get it ready to go for our glazing process. Sometimes when I dissolve this dye, there are some pinks that either were just suspended but sort of crashed to the bottom of the cup. And so I'm setting this up around an hour before I actually set up the glazing dye bath. So if we see some of those pinks settle, it shouldn't be an issue once we put all this dye in with, I don't know the volume that we'll use, but multiple, multiple cups of water. So it shouldn't be an issue then. Here's the pre-soak of our non-superwash yarns we're gonna try to glaze. Now I wanna add one, two, three tablespoons of white vinegar to our yarn. And I know I added it directly onto the yarn. That's something versus removing the yarn and adding it that I don't know how big of a difference that makes. It should spread throughout this whole dye bath and you can see me working it through. Um, but I'm gonna let that sit just for a minute or two as we finish setting up our dye bath. Because having acid in here already will increase the chances of getting a glazed effect on the yarn. In my 12 quart pot, I have 24 cups of water. Now, when I did some of my recent glazing videos, I started with, by accident, 450 milliliters of white vinegar. Um, which was more than I had intended to use, but I keep using it because it's worked and we want that higher acid today because, yeah, if something's working, why shift it? Although I suppose I really should figure out the pH here and then get, figure out how much citric acid powder to use. I think that that would be better or just use a bunch of citric acid powder. Um, I just know that citric acid can be harder on some fiber types, so I just don't use it as much, and I'm comfortable with the vinegar. It's just the vinegar can be more expensive, so that's something to keep in mind. I'm gonna stir up this pot. I just added our half of a gram of royal purple dye, and I guess now I need to get our yarn. Rebecca, 
If you want the dies to strike to the yarn quickly, why are we setting this up cold? We're setting up our dye bath cold with high acid because I've found that this is a great condition to get a glaze that's a little bit more even all over the skein and it still works really really well on superwash yarn. It's possible that if the dye bath were hot and we added the yarn to it we could get a glazed effect. It's just in my experience it ends up being a little bit patchier and so you might need to go into the dye bath multiple times and I found it trickier to work with. So I like this cold high acid setup but you never know. We're gonna cross fingers. <laughs> I squeezed out most of the liquid from our yarn, which may give it a little bit of a disservice, but we're gonna go in, put it all in. I'm gonna raise, lower the yarn, and now not touch it. Now immediately, I don't know. <laughs> if I'm looking at everything, everything feels very purple. Let's go over to the stove. I just turned the stove on high. We want things to heat up and it'll probably take, in my experience, around 30 minutes for this to heat up to get just below a simmer. I will be reducing the heat of the gas stove as time goes on. And then I want things to heat for 30 minutes for that color to set. It may take more time, it may not. I'm a little nervous right now because right now everything's feeling very purple. And I mean, we want things to be purple, but I'm wondering if I should have tried to set myself up for success more and had add the yarn soaked with water because by squeezing out some liquid and then adding the yarn to a purple liquid, it's gonna soak up some of that liquid like a sponge. And if the colors aren't gonna strike that fast, the outside of the yarn, you know, if it's gonna, if it needs more heat and time, then we may not see as much contrast as we might on something glazed. So I don't know what's gonna happen. Worst case scenario, we end up with some pretty purple yarn. So I guess I shouldn't be that bummed. But I'll come back in about an hour and we'll see where we are. It's been 17 minutes and I came over here and just exclaimed a little bit because I'm seeing some breaking for sure. So I don't know if that means we're gonna see glaze. I'm not looking at this and feeling glaze, but we might have some uneven color that is glaze adjacent. So we'll see, it's really hard to not touch the yarn. But I'm not touching the yarn, I'm not stirring it. We're gonna let things keep going. I'm gonna turn off the heat and I don't think we have glazing. <laughs> I think we may need to try a hot start with this yarn. Um, actually, you know what? It may just be lovely tonal. We'll have to wait for it to dry. I mean, certainly we have lovely, lovely tonal variation in here, more than I normally get with non-superwash yarn. So something with the high acid really helped get a ton of variation, which I love. Now here, with the single ply, we might it's gonna be hard if I would call it glazing or call it tonal. We're gonna really have to see it dry. I don't feel an airbrush quality, but we certainly have a lot of depth and dimension to the color. So, oh, man, it's hard because it definitely, I would call this more patchy than I would call it glazed. And I don't mean patchy as a bad term. It's just the areas where I feel variation, it feels like it goes deeper within the strand versus just being surface level. But there might be a few areas, like in here, where I almost feel a glaze, almost. We're gonna let this yarn cool off completely so we can wash it, but at this stage, I think the two things I would try next time would be to start with a hot dye bath, um, and then also, not remove all of the liquid from the yarn to sort of dunk it in the water with acid before adding it to the pot, which may be a weird temperature change, but I think if the yarn doesn't soak up as much of that original dye, that could help. There are a couple of areas that almost felt like they could be glazed, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I think I still have a skein of yarn 
a super wash skein of yarn that I glazed with these conditions. And honestly, in that video, I had double the amount of dye and double the amount of yarn um, with the same volume. So if I remember, I'll try to compare to that in the end, unless of course that yarn sells soon. Oh wait, I, I actually have one I can grab right now. Here is a glaze that we got with the same proportions of the purple. Uh, and I don't think this is the best light for it, so I'll try to show this again later. But, I know this color can work. It's just, I should take the win in that we got so much tonal variation, which is often hard to do on purpose with non-superwash yarn. Um, often the colors end up being fairly even, so I should take that win. Alright, I got a little distracted, but I'm back to wash carefully our non-superwash yarn. And I shouldn't be so sad. It's really, really pretty. Uh, you know, it's just not quite the effect that I'm used to getting. Which is okay. It's okay to just have pretty purple yarn. <laughs> Who can be mad at that? But the great news is we are not seeing any color bleeding. Um, so I do want to be very, very careful and very, very gentle with our yarn because we don't want any bleeding to start happening, but I'm going to, or, well, we don't want any felting either. So I am going to be very careful. I mean, I'm not being that careful, but I will try to be care more careful and I'm going to finish rinsing out the soap. Then I'll put the yarn in my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is our non-superwash glazed attempt yarn. And I think it's beautiful. I think that we could be close to something that is glazed, but I don't think we're there. For reference, these are three colors that I glazed um, on the same day I dyed this yarn, actually. And so the key feature is that you feel like your colors are airbrushed on. And so while there may be some areas in here that have, I don't think I can pick up on camera. There's some areas where I feel like, okay, things are starting to strike more surface level, but ultimately I think that enough color went into the yarn that it makes it hard to say. And then in here, uh, if I were to untwist this a little bit, the color went all the way through the single ply yarn versus say this example, which granted is a different super ply yarn, but here the color is all just like at a halo on the outside versus penetrating the fibers a bit more. Here's a skein of 100% superwash merino versus our 100% merino, 100% Peruvian Highland wool. Dyed with the exact same amount of color and proportion of color. And so I don't know how well you can see or feel the difference here. Certainly there's some patchiness to it, but that is a little bit what glaze is. And so in here you can really see how the color struck the outside of those plies, but not really the center. And so that is that effect that we're going for. And if we have it in here, maybe a tiny bit, we just ultimately don't have the contrast to really feel it. Because again, the colors sort of went deep a little bit. Now this yarn is stunning, and it's funny how this is more great, this one feels more pink, uh, that amuses me, but clearly I wouldn't look at this and call it glaze, I would call them beautiful tonals, and they are beautiful, beautiful tonals. But we'd have to decide if it's worth trying to up the amount of acid even further, because this is the proportion that we use with our other yarn. I did not increase the acid. If we wanna increase that acid further to give it another shot, or if maybe glazing is a technique that is just best saved for a superwash yarn. Because some techniques work, I mean, this isn't a high twist yarn either. Some techniques work better on high twist versus low twist. So those are just factors for your dyeing and variables that you need to consider when you want to achieve an effect. So don't despair if something doesn't work. Maybe it's just the yarn base. I mean, in here, it's like we're approaching something that's glazed, but not quite there yet. We're now in October, and if you're starting to think about the holidays, uh, well, I'm here to help. Pre-orders for the 2024 Chemnitz Hanukkah yarn sampler are now available. 
during the eight nights of Hanukkah, which start on December 25th this year, there will be a new yarn dyeing video every night and a corresponding wrapped mini skein that you can unwrap. It's a great way to treat yourself and make sure you have something to open on all eight nights of Hanukkah. We'll feature eight different dyeing techniques, eight different colorways, plus fun extras. And there are even some other mystery full skein colorways that you can add to your sampler so you get even more packages to open up. You can find more information over in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop and I'll have it linked down below. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you have any suggestions on how I should modify this experiment, please let me know down in the comment section below. I am always happy to take risks and try new things so that way we can all learn together. And so I am more than happy to play around with this some more. I just don't know if, I don't know if it would be worth it, but I, again, I'm willing to try if you have an idea or if you have a result that you know works, I'm happy to try to replicate that. And see, that's the reason why you should subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, because I'm willing to take chances, get messy, make mistakes. Not that I made a mistake here, but I'm willing to try things not knowing how they might turn out, which is a privilege that I have as a video content creator who happens to have an Etsy shop on the side. <laughs> even though my Etsy shop is a huge part of my business. Uh, if you want to bring home some hand dyed yarn, uh, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. But the biggest thing you can do to help support the content and help me continue to make fun videos where I try to push the boundaries of what I can do with color and yarn, the biggest thing you can do is subscribe. Subscribe, turn on notifications, like the video, engage with the videos. That's the biggest way you can help support things. It's funny, because the other thing is, I don't know which color is the best color to use for glazing. Uh, and so I picked the purple because that seemed like it's one that works really well, but that's just another thing to consider is if there's another color that works better for a glaze that I should conceivably try out. Hmm, I'll have to think on it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching.